Hello everybody. Today we are going to be talking about linear transformation transformations on data sets. And what does a linear transformation mean? First of all, what does a linear transformation mean? It means you take some value, okay, some value, and you add it, or I could subtract it. I take a value, say x, and I could multiply something to that value I'm just transforming it linearly okay so that means I'm not squaring it I'm multiplying it times a different number okay or I could take that number and I could divide it okay so sometimes they'll just say a linear transformation is when you add a constant or you or you multiply a constant because adding could just be adding a negative which is the same thing as a subtraction or multiplying could be multiplying times a fraction which is, is just the same thing as dividing okay so generally it's just adding and multiplying okay so I threw a lot at you here take a time take a second to just pause the video to read through it to make sure you understand what it means okay so what I've given you is the heights in a class in inches okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to find our statistics these are all our descriptive statistics okay about this data set so let's go ahead and to save time I've already thrown this in you guys should have an idea how to throw the data in so I have my data in list one okay so I'm gonna go ahead and run my one variable statistics which is uh, stat calc enter my data is in list one so I could hit enter so I'm just gonna write down these statistics And if you remember, um, the IQR is nothing more than the range from Q3 to Q1. Okay, so that the IQR is 5. Okay, so let's just go right into it. Later it was discovered that the scale, that the scale was wrong. Everybody should have been an inch taller. So I went ahead and changed these. I went ahead and changed these. But I'm going to show you a trick in the calculator on how to do these. So I want to change add one to all of these. I'm going to add one to my list one. So I'm going to go to the list two, go to the list two, make sure it's highlighted and hit enter. You're going to be blinking here on the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to hit L1, which is second one, and I want to just add one. This will add one to everybody in list two and it'll put it in list, it'll, put, it'll add one to everybody in list one and store it in this two. And there we go. So now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and run these run the statistics. Run the statistics stat calc. And now if you notice my data is in L2 now, so I have to tell the calculator to put it in L2. So click on that. And then let's just go ahead and write these numbers down and see what the difference is and see what changed and see what didn't change. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to see what's changed. I'm going to star it. Okay, so let's look at the old. Let's look at this and look at this. It went up by one. So it did exactly what the other thing. So look at what the standard deviation did. This is no change. No change. I'm going to do change as a triangle. No change. The minimum went up one. QN went up one. The median went up one, Q3 went up one, the max went up one, and look at the IQR was no change. So the two things that didn't change, the two stats with no change is the or were the were the standard deviation and the IQR. And this makes sense because these are my two measures of spread. These are measures of spread. Measures of spread. And what that means is that, like, let's look at the IQR. The IQR is this box right here. 
it's this box. So if you add a constant, this box will shift to the right. If you subtract the constant, constant this box this box plot will shift to the left. So let's say it shifts up by one. So everything shifts up by one. But what actually stayed the same? This stayed the same. Okay, so the IQRs don't change. The same concept for standard deviation. If you have a standard deviation of a box plot, okay, if you have a standard deviation for a box plot, and this is your data, this is all on a number line, and what I do is if I shift, so this would be the standard deviation right here, say something like this, it's a measure of spread, okay? Standard deviation is the typical distance away. Well, the typical distance away is just a number. Okay, and that means typically all my data should fall in this little middle part. So if I shift it all, okay, so say I shift it by 20, all these box plots stay the same. They just get shifted over by 20. And what didn't change? The standard deviation, the typical distance didn't change. Okay, so basically all that happens is the typical distance doesn't change, but the numbers just get bigger. Okay. So that's the idea for, th this is for adding or subtracting. But let's look at multiplying or dividing. Okay, so this is the pay scale for 10 military servicemen, and this is the amount of money they make per year. Okay, so these are the 10 servicemen. Okay, so I have this data in, I have this data in L3. So let's go ahead and run the statistics on this. Okay, so here I am blinking. I'm in list three, so I have to tell the calculator list three. Okay, there we go. So 77.8. Okay, so now that we have that data in, let's go ahead and look to see what these numbers are going to be. And I purposely did, didn't put these in because I want to show you kind of how how we do this. So if everybody gets a 10% raise, let's look at 30. So if you make 30,000 per year and you get a 10% raise, basically what you're going to do is you're going to find whatever 10% of that is. 10% of that is. So I take 10% of 30,000. Okay, remember this is in 30,000, so let me write this out bigger. This is like a little trick that somebody taught me at some time. So I'm going to find 10% of this, okay, and then which is what, 3,000? That's 3,000. So basically, your new pay is going to be 33,000. Okay, but let, let's look at the trick on how, how we're going to do this. So basically, what you're doing is you're taking 30,000, you're multiplying it at 1.1. Okay, and then what, whatever this is, this is 3,000. What are you going to do with this 3,000? I took this 3,000 and I added it back to the 30,000. Okay, but look at this. This is this is basic algebra. I have a like term. I have a 30,000 there and a 30,000 there. So I could pull a 30,000 out. So this would be 30,000. And then what's left? This term's gone. That's out. So I'm left with a 0.1. Okay. Plus I took this term out. And I took this term out. So if I take this 30,000 out, algebraically I'm left with a 1. Okay. So that's basically just 30,000. And I could add this with 1 plus 0.1, which is 1.1. Okay, so basically this is the number I need to multiply to all my data set. So I have my data in L3. I have my data set in L3. Okay, so here's all my data set, but I want to multiply all my L3 by 1.1. So I hit 1.1 times L3. And that's going to put all my data into there. Okay, so I'm just going to write a few of these. I'm not going to write them all. 33, 104.5, 49.5, and you should be able to see it in your calculator. Okay, and then it's 70.4, 133.1. Okay, now let's go ahead and run our statistics on this. And I'm in list four. Should be getting fast at that now. So let's see what went up. 
Okay, so now that I have my data in, let's look to see if this is actually true. If I take the mean, which is 77.8, and how much did all these increase by? These all increased by a multiple of, I times this by 1.1, all my data by 1.1. So let's see if this is true. I'm going to take 77.8, and I'm going to multiply it times 1.1. And let's test to see if this is what actually happened, 85.458. So basically what I did with this is 1.1. And I'm not going to do it, but all these change by a multiple of 1.1. You could actually try them all. They all increase by a multiple of 1.1. So unlike the mean and the unlike the add and the subtracting, okay. So when you added in or subtracted, the s of x and the IQ, IQR stayed, okay. But if you multiply or divide they all change. Okay, they all change by that multiple. They all change by that multiple. Okay, and I'm going to do one more thing. I have a little small question for you. Okay, so I randomly selected 50 days last year and found an average degree Celsius of 32 and a standard deviation of degree 12. Okay, these are in, these are in Celsius. Okay, so find the average in Fahrenheit and standard deviation in Fahrenheit. Okay, so the rule is if you're adding or subtracting, okay, on, only the mean. I just showed you that you, not the standard deviation, not S D. Okay. Okay. So you have the mean. So basically, the Fahrenheit would equal nine fifth degrees. What was my average? My average was 32. Okay. My average was, and for only the mean, so I could add and subtract for the mean. So plus 32. Okay. So this is going to be 9 times 32 divided by 5. Enter plus 32. Okay. So this would equal. 89.6 degree Fahrenheit. Let me write it on the other side. Degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so when I put the average in, I'm allowed to do that. So how about the standard deviation? The standard deviation. This was for the mean. This is for the standard deviation. So 9 fifth degree, which was, uh, standard deviation was 12. Okay, but remember, not standard deviation. So if you add and subtract, not standard deviation, just for multiplication and dividing. So this is the answer for the standard deviation. So this would be the standard deviation degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so for those 50 days, if you converted them, this would be it. So take it, um, watch this a couple times over again, and tell what I did because this is usually what trips people up when you have to do both of them. For means you multiply and add. For standard deviations you multiply but you don't add. Okay so thank you for watching. I appreciate it and have a nice evening or day.